Hey, good morning. I'm MLive Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregross. Thanks for joining me on the MLive Morning Weather Update. A few things. I might rant a little bit on this one, too. I will get into the weather. There's nothing serious imminently right now, but we do have the chance, a fairly significant chance of severe weather for uh, tomorrow. I had the dream. Let me get the first rant off. I had the dream last night. All of us former broadcasters have it. In television, you're always working on tight time frames down to the seconds, you know, and everybody always has this nightmare that they're out of television, they get back in, and they just can't get their job done in time. So I, I had that last night. Um, and so the other, the next thing I want to bring up to you is this is what I call derecho pattern. Now remember, derecho is a long-lasting line of severe thunderstorms. I'm not predicting necessarily derecho, but what I'm saying is that the overall pattern, a hot dome just to our south, jet stream riding over it through the Great Lakes, that is the classic derecho pattern and enough disturbances to uh, cause thunderstorms. Uh, County Ray Castle, we're not going to be super, super hot for any long time period because of this quote unquote derecho pattern and the thunderstorms swing, swing a cold front through for a couple of days and then uh, come back up. Hey, Mark Morey is up at Hubbard Lake. Have yourself a great time. I've never been there, but it looks like a big lake. Looks like a nice lake. Is there good fish in there? Is it a nice lake? Let us know, Mark Morey. Okay, so this is the most important thing. This is tomorrow's severe weather outlook. Um, remember, the severe weather forecast is on a, on a five-level system. So level one would be what's called marginal risk. That's that darker green through the center part of lower Michigan. Level two would be a slight risk. We've gone away from using the word slight risk because slight mostly makes most of you say, nah, I won't worry about it. So it's the level two risk on level on a five level scale. Enhanced, yeah, I don't like that wording either because it sounds like it could be worse than some of the moderate and high. Is it? Is it? It's a level three on the five level scale. Now, that is the overall that is the overall forecast. Oh, I just closed it down. Let me open her back up for you. Bear with me a second. I want to go back over that with you. Okay, should be uh, just a second here. I got too many tabs open this morning. I got to shut a few down. Okay, so we're back at it. Okay, um, so this is the tornado risk. And there we go to percentages. And you can see that the southern, you know, almost the southern half, and basically from about Grand Rapids to Flint southward, has a 5% chance of a tornado within 25 miles of a point. That's fairly high. Uh, the wind, damaging wind gust of 58 miles an hour or stronger. 30 mile, 30% 30 chance, I-94 southward, then 15% chance up to north of Grand Rapids and to the Saginaw area. And I'll be detailing this in the next hour or so and staying updated with you on it. Uh, hey, thanks for joining me, by the way. This is MLive Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrossa. Your morning weather update. This is the way we do it. We got 428. If you could hit the share button, I'd greatly appreciate it. This is a, a severe weather outlook for... Tomorrow, all right, Hubbard Lake looks like it's a good fishing trip to make. Walleye? What kind of fish? Um, so here's your chance of large hail. And unlike the last severe weather outbreak, well, I guess I should say the difference is the last severe weather outbreak, the Storm Prediction Center was really hammering home the possibility of very large hail, and they nailed it. They nailed the location, southeast third of the state, and we had that uh, three and a half inch hail in Davison. Uh, fortunately, we only had a couple of large hail uh, thunderstorm events. In this case, tomorrow, they are highlighting the chance for large hail, but they don't put the very large hail in the forecast. Now, let's just look at the satellite picture and 
you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, so here we are with our smoky skies. I wrote about that yesterday. Yes, we're in the smoke feed also because this same upper airflow that brings disturbances and is a derecho pattern is also coming from where the forest fires are now in western Canada and the northern Rockies. So smoky today, but notice the clumps of thunderstorms. Notice the burst of storms developing in Nebraska. Uh, also in the Dakotas. So now we pick up with the radar, and you can see it. nothing looks really too ominous just at, out to the west. So we go to the modeling, okay, and we'll look at several models. In this case, what, what generally the scenario is, is tomorrow morning into early afternoon, a severe complex of thunderstorms moves across Michigan. Now, you know from watching me over the years, timing is very important as to whether we escape severe weather or, or get it. And usually in Michigan, the most severe weather occurs in the second half of the afternoon and the first half of the evening. So 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. So if thunderstorms were to roll through during the morning, it, they may not be as severe. Having said that, we have had some of our worst derechos, like the May 1998 came through 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. So if a storm system is strong, sometimes the timing of the day doesn't matter. So we'll just keep an eye on it. It does not appear to be very ominous like that just yet, but it's the time of year when that happens. So we go through the day today. And again today, just like yesterday in the last few days, we can get these five or 10 mile wide downpours. Uh, nothing that you plan on, but possible. Now this system, this model is pretty good and it's a little aggressive with this afternoon, four o'clock, clumps of thunderstorms around Bay City and uh, Saginaw, Midland to Clare up to Houghton Lake. So watch for that and then it weakens it. And then we go through the night tonight, we're at one, two, three, four, five, six o'clock tomorrow morning, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Uh, this is noon. And so that's when it brings the thunderstorms across. Actually, this model, and now that I look at the new data, it's a, it's a noon, you know, it's a, it's a morning, that's nine o'clock to noon, to five and six and seven in the afternoon. And actually it wants to develop a secondary line. So a lot going on here tomorrow. And that's what you get with uh, what I call a derecho pattern. You get a lot going on. Um, you ever seen the movie, It's a Wonderful Life? Remember, he's kind of depressed and, um, oh Mary, I wish I'd never been born. And then his angel comes down, let's see, George. What would happen if you were never born? The severe weather pattern in a derecho pattern is kind of like that. The models are forecasting tomorrow off of what they think a thunderstorm complex will do today. If that thunderstorm complex does something a little different, then the domino effect of the storms tomorrow will be placed a little different, a little bit different intensity, a little bit different timing, and so on. So we really have to just to be honest, tell you that generally we think there's a big clump of thunderstorms coming across probably the southern two thirds of lower Michigan, more likely the southern third uh, being more ferocious tomorrow, but we don't know the exact details. So we have to wait to see how the next uh, system evolves. And really we have to wait to see where that clump that's gonna hit us tomorrow develops tonight. All right. So, um, so basically what this is saying is quite a clump of thunderstorms coming across. Uh, Mitch Neely, uh, will Davison get hit again? Well, that's the forecast right there for six o'clock 
tomorrow off of one of these models. Let's also go to the high resolution rapid refresh. You hear me talk about that one quite a bit. We only get it out 18 hours. Um, so that goes through one in the morning. Now we do get a run uh, that goes out 48 hours and it shows a, a similar scenario. This is two o'clock tomorrow afternoon, three, four, and five. So it shows, again, a couple of lines of thunderstorms in the afternoon tomorrow. Now we go to the bigger model that lets us know uh, what's going on in the big picture. And this is the European. And notice it forecasts the same southern half of the state thunderstorm complex in the afternoon tomorrow. So everything is pointing toward tomorrow afternoon being a, a stormy and possibly severe stormy type day. Thursday, we get hotter. And then Saturday, another thunderstorm complex, Friday night and Saturday, sweeps on and the cooler air comes in and we kick out of the pattern for at least several days maybe not getting back into the storm pattern until Wednesday or so of next week. Very classic weather story textbook case this time of the year. Hot Ridge just to our south, jet stream riding over it through the Great Lakes. Thunderstorm clumps, they come through, bring cooler air in from the north for a couple of days, heat comes back, in comes the storms along the edge, so it's like a soap opera. Every three to five days, we get a clump of severe storms, a cool down, and then back into the heat and humidity. Uh, let's see what else I have lined up. Okay, so this is the Europeans ensemble mode. And just to show you that, that the track of rain is across lower Michigan over the next 16 days. This is total rainfall through August 9th. In the thumb there, you see that would be a um, two to three inch rain. Uh, rest of lower would be, you know, up to two inches of rain. And the caveat, the asterisk that I know, I'm telling you, the ensemble mode does not, and the European does not handle the heaviest thunderstorms. So when I see an overall pattern that says two to three inches of rain, at this time of the year, knowing that the storms can really produce some rain in isolated nature, I say that we have double that, and in places you can get triple that, very isolated. So two to three, we double that. Some places in the heavier thunderstorms will total four to six inches of rain in the next three weeks or so. Um, so the rain is going to continue to come, it looks like, let's say. And also, going back to the It's a Wonderful Life scenario, um, the temperatures revolve around what thunderstorms are coming through at what time of the day, if the clouds are decaying from them, if they come through early in the morning, the clouds decay, the, decay, the sun comes out, we get to the 90s. If they come through during the afternoon, we stay in the upper 80s and we're uh, very humid. So I would just generally say that this is a warm forecast until Saturday when we start to uh, cool down. So today, upper 80s to near 90 and humidity going up. Tomorrow, depends on the timing of the uh, thunderstorms, keeps us out of the 90s because generally it's thought in the afternoon we'll get cloudy with thunderstorms. Thursday looks, looks hot. I would say it'll be in the low 90s. I would say this will probably be a little bit cool for the forecast. And Friday looks hot, southern third of the state into the 90s. Then Saturday, Sunday, and Monday start to cool down. So there is your weather update. We're watching the severe weather for tomorrow, southern half of the state, and get ready for some heat and humidity, but it won't last long, a couple of days of it, and then we're back to gorgeous summer Michigan weather. I'm MLive Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrosa. Have yourselves a great day. Bye.